Hey guys, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. So in today's video, we're going to be addressing some of the questions that you guys have left um, in the comments section for the unboxing video we just did like, what, a day and a half ago or something like that. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So Joseph Conforti, and I apologize if I'm butchering your name, wants to know if the graphite edition of the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 is a fingerprint magnet. No, Joseph, no, not at all. Actually, it's much, much improved compared to last year's model, which we have sitting right here. This is Mystic Navy, and it picks up every single fingerprint there is. Whereas the graphite one, no, not really at all. I mean, I'm looking at it in the light right now. It's looking pretty good. Uh, let me get back in here. So yeah, uh, the fingerprints and the smudges and stuff show up a lot less. And I've been reading a lot of reports on Reddit and stuff that the silver version of this like hardly picks up any fingerprints at all. So um, yeah, much improved compared to last year. Heir to the Throne wants to know, how many M.2 slots do we have available? So um, Heir to the Throne, on the 13 inch, you're not gonna have any empty slots available. So it would behoove you to choose wisely as far as your storage goes. However, on this 15.6 inch model, on both last year's and the current gen one, we have an extra available M.2 slot. So you can upgrade that in the future if you so choose to. So the next question, is from Always October, and Michael Michael Mendez went ahead and bumped his comment too. I mean, he wants to know about it as well. But Always October wants to know, hey, can you run some benchmarks on this? And uh, can you give me an idea of how well Overwatch plays? Are we getting close to 60 FPS? Let's go ahead and spend the rest of this video addressing that. And that is, let's run some benchmarks and let's test out Overwatch. Let's see how well this thing performs. So for the benchmark test, what we are gonna be using for testing is going to be Heaven for some of the 3D testing, GPU performance. And we're gonna do a Geekbench 5 test. We're gonna go ahead and do a speedometer 2.0 test to check the web browsing speeds. And we're gonna run Cinebench and we will do some results comparisons with other machines that are out there that are currently popular. And we'll see how well this one performs. We'll also be taking a look at some of these tests on last year's model to get an idea of how much a performance gain we get by going to the new Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. Before we get started with the testing, um, one thing I wanna mention is that I did make some adjustments to the settings. Let's go ahead and pull these up real quick. Um, Samsung. This way we're on the same page and you guys know exactly um, what conditions were present during the test. So let's open up Samsung settings. First thing to keep in mind um, while we do these benchmarks is both machines are plugged into power. That does of course make a difference. And I went ahead and up the performance mode to high performance because that's what we care about during benchmarking. And in addition to that, we also have the power and battery settings from Windows itself. If we open this up, we have three different options best power efficiency, balanced, and best performance. We'll go ahead and put that on best performance. I, I played around with these settings quite a bit. And unless you like put it in like the battery saver mode and on the Samsung settings, you put it to like the no fan mode, really doesn't make that big a difference. I mean, it probably would if you gave it a real load, you know what I mean? Multiple things running on it and stuff. But as far as running benchmarks, I haven't noticed much of a difference, but let's give them both the best fighting chance. So both machines are configured this way for best performance. I went ahead and already ran the Cinebench tests because they take a long time to run. So let's go ahead and start with that. So let's look at the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360, the newest model out. We have a CPU multi-core score of 8348 and a CPU single score of 1621, which is flippin' incredible. Um, let's go over to the original Galaxy Book Pro from last year. Um, I have a hard time seeing the screen from here. Um, so we have a multi-core of 5035. So you're looking at basically a 3,000 point difference on the multi-core. And on single core, we are looking at 1,376. So we have eh, roughly a 250 point gain on the newer version. So, uh, but the thing is, these numbers are kind of arbitrary unless we actually compare them to something, right? So let's go ahead and do that now. So what I'm concerned with is our nice little rival, and that would be the M1 chips. Single core, 1,562. And if we go back to our machine here, we are at 1621. So we have surpassed the M1 Pro. And on multi-core, it's pulling 14970, whereas we are only getting 8348. So, you know, the M1 does definitely have a beat in the multi-core performance, as to be expected. Um, let's take a look at the M1 Max, though. So if we look at the Cinebench scores here, 1562 on single core. And like I mentioned before, we're at 1621 
on the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360, so we have higher single core performance than even the M1 Max chip. And, but of course the multi-core still beats it at 14,970. Um, I swear when I ran the test before, my CPU multi-core was up in the 9,000s. Um, nonetheless, we'll go ahead and stick with this score because this is what I just ran. Um, so quite a big performance gain as you can see from the Cinebench results. So next up, the next thing we want to check on, we are going to go to speedometer. Perfect. There it is. So speedometer 2.0 is basically like a benchmarking tool for your browsers. So let's go ahead and open that up now. And uh, let's go ahead and start the test. And I've run this quite a few times already on the Galaxy Book Pro. The highest score I got is the one you see on the screen right now, 210. I'm normally averaging right around 200 on it, which is an excellent score. That's fantastic. Um, so 214. So not big of a difference, but then again, keep in mind, guys, that this type of test doesn't really push the system hard. It really just checks all the different API calls. Um, it runs a bunch of JavaScript, a bunch of this type of stuff that's really easy for the machines. So it's not too surprising to me that they're kind of similar. So next up, let's go ahead and load up GeekMedge. Um, so the first one we're going to do is a CPU benchmark. Let's go ahead and get this started. All right, cool. We have some results. So the Geek Pitch 5 score, um, you know, and one thing to keep in mind too, guys, is you really should run these like five to 10 times and then do an average of all those together. But um, it, this is pretty consistent though. I've run it a few times. So we have a 1502 single core and an 8384 multi-core. So let's go back here and take a look at our MacBook again. Let's go to Mac M1 Pro. I like comparing to Apple stuff. Let's see here. Geekbench, single core, 1768, right? Where's it at? 1768, 1502 for the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. And the multi-core is 11680, whereas we have an 8384. So very respectable. You know, it's in the ballpark of it. It's not too bad. Um, let's go over here to the M1 Max. Single core, 1768, we're at a 1502, like I mentioned, and multi-core is 11968, and we're at 8384. So it, it holds its own there, you know, it's not too bad. So let's go ahead and compare it to some other machines that have the same chipset. So the chip that we have is the Intel 12th Gen Alder Lake 1260P. That's what we have in this particular machine. And you will see here, we are faring quite well. Um, our scores, like I said, were... Let's see, I need to go back and find them. Here we go, 1502 and 83.84. So we are very close to the score, like right here. Uh, this was posted, looks like today. And you see we're doing better than these right here. You see we have a Lenovo with the same chipset. Um, and we are out, we're outscoring it on multi-core, but not single core. Single core, it's got a 1799, we have a 1502. Whereas it's multi-core 6460, and we're at an 8384. Um, we have another Lenovo right around that same mark. You see we have a lot of Samsungs getting posted. Guys, looks like this is a really popular machine. This is uh, in order. My goodness. Another Lenovo, 1712. Yes, yeah, so we're right in line with other machines. Pretty close. 1639. Like the tests I did yesterday were in the 1600s. A little bit closer than these. I want to find one more that's not a Samsung one or Lenovo. Let's see here. These are probably about the only machines out that have this chipset though. We have an Acer Swift with this, really? Now let's go to Geekbench and we need to run the graphics benchmarks real quick. We'll do an open CL test. All right, an 18886. That's a really good score. We can't do a direct comparison with like the um, Apple ones because they use the metal GPU driver, whereas we use Vulkan and OpenCL, OpenGL, and all the other Windows ones. Next up, let's check the overall GPU performance and frame rates that we can expect to get out some games. Let's open up Heaven. All right, so let's go ahead and start the test. Give it just a moment. And let's benchmark. All 
All right, so in those settings on this, we are averaging about 75 to 78 frames per second. It's running ultra smooth. Not seeing any issues. No hiccups in the audio either. That's really important when you're running these tests because when you really push it to the max, you'll start to hear, hear hiccups in the audio as it stresses out the entire system and not just the GPU. We're not getting any of that. This looks buttery smooth. All right, let's go ahead and exit out of this. So we're gonna go ahead and bump up the low to medium. This is gonna represent most of the settings that people will pick when they're running games. Let's go ahead and run this. Give it just a minute. And we'll switch to benchmark. All right, looks like our frames per second is averaging right around 42, 41 to 42. Staying pretty consistent. Oh wow, we're in the 60s now. Bumped up to 80 for a second, 65. Now we're down in the low 40s, 42. The lowest dip I saw it hit was like 39. Still smooth, buttery smooth, looks good. This is totally playable off this game. All right, let's bump it up one more notch. I'm not gonna go to ultra or extreme or anything because we don't have dedicated graphics here, guys. But um, so far for integrated graphics, the uh, Intel Iris XC is holding up pretty well. Let's go ahead and escape. All right, so we are going to switch this up to high. All right. Go ahead and start. Benchmark, let's let it run just a little bit. So we're hovering right around 37, 38. Let's see if it goes up. Looks like we hit 40 there for a second. Yep, there's 40. So we're in the high 30s to 40 again. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Um, so next up, always October, um, was really chomping at the bit to find out if uh, we could get 60 FPS out of Overwatch um, because it's about ready to pre-order. So I already let him know the test results, but now I'm gonna share it with you guys. We'll go ahead and run it in real time and we will just go ahead and go into anything. Let's go into training real quick. FPS for right at 70, 69, nice. Okay. Now, where is she? Wait for me. We are still sitting right at 6970. Yeah, okay. Whatever. So we'll go here. Let's see if the frame rates are staying the same. Oh yeah. All right guys, so with the Intel Iris XE graphics, we are managing a constant and consistent 69 to 70 frames per second um, on low to medium settings on Overwatch. So that's a little bit better than I was expecting, not so bad at all. All right guys, so those are some preliminary benchmarks and some answers to your guys' questions. So feel free to drop some more questions in the comments section. I'll tell you what guys, I love the comments sections. I, I truly appreciate you guys. It's a lot of fun just interacting with you guys and trying my best to answer the questions. Um, oh, and before I leave, hey guys, I really, really want to thank you guys so very much for just how fast this channel is growing. I'm like at almost a thousand subs already. I just started a couple months ago. So I'm just loving doing these videos and there's going to be a lot more on this Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 to come. And as always guys, thanks for watching.